Yo, welcome back to Careless Kingdom. On this episode, I'm going to be showing you all things to do with the suspension and changing out the tires on the D6 2.0. First thing you're going to need is, of course, if you're changing out tires, these are the new tires from Max Amp. They sent them out to me to give them a trial on the D6. Here's a good look at that Max Amp tire Let's so you get an idea of what you're looking at. Cool tires. They smell like rubber, so that's good. Excited to see how these work. Now, unfortunately, we're not going to be riding today. But we are going to throw them on there and see how they look. Here's your tire, your spare tire, whatever it is. You're going to need your Allen key set that the scooter came with. You're going to need a breaker bar, or I don't know what you call these, but it's to take those big guys off. Last but not least, you're going to need a spanner wrench, and this is a 5562, and that's going to be for your suspension so we can get that adjusted. Anyways, bear with me just a second, and we're going to get to taking that tire off. Okay, so the very first thing you're going to do is take these caps off. And what I like to use for that is just the, the flat head that's in here. So those caps are on there good. Pop. Get the other side. Pop. So this can be kind of a pain to break off for the first time. And even after that, as long as you get it on there correctly. Always remember lefty loosey righty tighty. I almost forgot lefty loosey righty tighty there for a second. So I don't have any leverage going that way. Let's do this. There we go. So we got one side loose. I'll go over to the other. Oh, that one. Was on there good. And you want them to be on there good so they don't come off on you when you're riding. So now I'm going to take both those off. And then we're going to plop the scooter back up on that box. There we go. Now there is a washer in there as well. Once we get it back up on the box, we'll be able to take that off. So now to get it off, it's just a lot of finesse. I don't remember the last one being that much of a pain to get off. But then again, I've done it a few dozen times, so everything loosens up after a while. Alright, so we're going to figure out a way to get these off of there. All right, that worked. Took my spanner wrench, hooked it underneath there. Boom. So now you can see we got those guys off. And you see all the shit that's on there. It's all the sticky shit they have so it won't come off. That's a fucking mess. I think it's some kind of thread locker, but 
I don't know what kind of thread locker, but your wheel should at this point just fall right out. Yeah. So one problem is, is, uh, let me zoom in that screw right there. So there's that and it comes down a little bit. See, we follow the cable to right there as well. Now those, so I paused the video here because my camera messed up, but if you see what we currently have on the screen, you only need to take the bottom portion of that off and bend it up and then put it back on before we put the tire back on. Sorry, the video cut out there for a second. I'm not sure why it cut out, but it completely cut out. So what we were on is we were on that inner screw. You take those off, and then after you take that off, the tire gives you a lot more room. And then if you look inside here, you see all these little bolts? You need to take those out. So let the air out of the tire by taking the cap off. Hold that down. You're just going to let all the air out. And then you just want to go around and take these out. We're down to the last one now. Thought that one was ready. Not quite ready. There we go. So that should be last one. Let's check. Yep, so they're all out. So let's note which way the tire's rolling. You see the the arrow right there? So we're rolling that way. So we need to remember that. And as you've seen there, when I pulled, it just comes apart. Straight up comes apart like that. Let me zoom you out a little bit. Yeah, comes apart. So you got part of your rim in here. You got the other part in there. Now these Max Amp tires, uh, they don't have a direction. Let me look hard and make sure. I don't see a direction. Yeah, so I don't... I don't see a direction. So with that being said, we're going to go... Let's see, which way looks good. I want to say it's like that. With the, with the red on the right side of the scooter. Let's see. Yeah, it has to be like that. That's the only way it looks like it makes sense. All right, so with that being said, uh, we need to make sure we put it on there like that. So we're going to put the tube in this. Now, keep in mind, these tires say tubeless. Um, I'm pretty sure they would have told me if it wouldn't have worked with a tube. So I'm putting a tube in them because they know which scooters I got. So I'm sure they, they prepared. So there's just the tube that was in the hand robot to begin with. I'm going to let a little air out. Check it. That looks like a pretty good tube. Still got some life in it. And then I need to figure out which way it went in there because I wasn't paying attention. So you know what? We'll do that together. Where's the... Okay. So we need the stem coming out of the left side. So we're just going to push it in there. Be gentle but firm. You know, it is thick rubber. So you should be good. And you want a little bit of air in there. You see how we got it in there. There's a little air in there. And at that point, we need to take our the left side of the hub, string it through right there. Put the guy back in there like that. Now, whenever you're putting them back on, make sure that this rubber in here, you see how we have the tube? You don't want to pinch flat, so you want to make sure all that's pushed back and it's not gouging out too much. So even I'm going to let out a little bit more air, and I'm pushing to let some air out. So I make sure whenever I put it on, there's enough room between everything, and nothing's getting pinched. And then we're putting it on just the way we took it off. So we're taking our hub motor, which this is our hub motor, and we're uh, just, you know, boom, putting them on there like that. Now keep in mind, the hub motor does weigh a good bit. If you had something to lay all this on, you'd probably be better off. 
you're going to line up those screws. Once they're lined up, same thing, just in reverse, put the screws back in. And keep in mind with these screws, you don't really want to tighten them all up at the same time. Um, go a little bit on one and go to another one etc until you get them all tight you know kind of cross it's like pop 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 type deal so once i got that guy in not even firm just a tad bit snug like i just felt a little tiny resistance i'm gonna go in put another one in it's like i'm gonna drop it put another one in Sure, the hub motor don't fall on me. So again, I didn't tighten that guy up. I'm putting two more in. I'm not going to tighten these up too tight. Just get them down to firm. Or not even firm, just a, a little wool snug, like finger tight. Just once I start feeling resistance, I give up. So down, down, down. resistance and stuff and I'm going to do that for the rest of these All right, now that I have them all in there snug but not tight, I'm going to go through in a cross pattern. I'm going to tighten them up. So I got that one tight right over here. Tighten that guy up. Back up. Tight. Come on. See, whenever you do that, put a release. I'm like, what's the word I'm looking for? It alleviates pressure on the other ones and allows you to tighten them in there a little bit better. So that's one thing, right? If I tighten this one here, by doing so, it might loosen up this guy just because the pressure's not equal in there anymore. So you always want to go around and just make sure that they're all nice and tight. Now you don't want these like break your wrench tight. You just want them, you know, tight enough. That's one thing I've always been bad about is over tightening. So don't be like me. And don't over tight. Uh, we need our pump. All right, I found our tire pump. And I'm gonna show you one thing with this. This is a quick disconnect. And the reason why, sorry, the reason why you need this is because you need to get this tire to 50 psi. No more, no less. I mean, you go a little bit less on it, but if you're screwing in like ch -ch -ch, how small this tire is, you're going to lose a lot of PSI just by taking it off. So right now, it says we're at no PSI. So we're going to get up to 50. See, psh, right off. Now, I obviously have a problem with mine. So it wasn't holding that connection well, but this is an old adapter. I just had to push it on there to keep it on there. It's been a while since I've had to put uh, air 
and any tires because I use the green slime for dirt bikes. Now, I haven't put that in here, and I'll probably regret that one day. But whenever I do regret it, I'll go back to putting the slime in it. Um, I just don't have any right now, or I would. Now, we got to put the tire back on, so we're going to take her off. Uh, kind of optional. You should put this guy back on down here. Um, but I've gotten away with not doing that <laughs> on uh, previous scooters of mine. But, uh, we'll see. If it gives us, if it's easy, we'll, we'll put her back on there. Yeah, so we'll push her back down. Bend her back down. I gotta line this up. Find the hole. See, I'm telling you, this little screw there. Can take this job from being a 20 30 minute job into a damn hour Just sitting here fiddling with this all right we got her in there it's a lot easier whenever you lay down on the ground you get right there with her now that we are through with that debacle You know what? Let's make sure she's tightened up. We went this far. Might as well finish it. I want a half ass. Now, uh, I mean, we're in the clear. It's pretty easy from here. Now we just need to get our tire back on there. This part, don't be too afraid about breaking anything. Make sure that your your washers are on the inside. And you're going to have to kind of fiddle this around to get these guys up in there. Because the, the hub motor and everything likes to move around on you. Got to line up your brake into the rotor. Yep, there we go. Just kind of fiddle around with it till it gets in there. Now you want to take these are very important these are your lock washers make sure that they're pointed towards the lock so whenever you get them in there like that they should lock themselves once you start tightening them down make sure that you do get it all the way up in there see that so it's locked it'll still come out though Currently, where there's no pressure. Go ahead and put them on both sides. We're going to start putting our nuts on. Whenever you put them on, you'll make sure that these are seated all the way in those holes. Like right there. You see how there? I'll show you. You make sure that these are seated in there properly. Because if they're not seated or seated, uh, they'll be able to move around on you. So now... Remember lefty loosey righty tighty. They usually want to make sure they're tight, good and tight. Very tight. Now I'm just kind of tightening them down a little bit right now. Kind of the same thing we were doing with the actual tire. A little bit on one side, a little bit on the other side. And then we're going to really torque them down here in a minute. Now, in terms of like a torque spec for these, I truly don't know if there is one. So I just say torque them way the fuck down. So I'm going to take it off the box again. Just so we get maximum leverage. <laughs> 
so I won't get that one snug. I'll get the other side snug. Okay, so now I'm going to get on my knees so I can give it a good bit of leverage. Because you don't want that coming off on you. So now that I got those on there nice and tight, I'm going to take a little bit of, what is this called, Viz Torque, and it'll just show me if these bolts move at all. I'm going to put a little bit out. It looks like it's working again. Yep. So just like that. Now, it's not the prettiest, but you'll be able to see easily if these bolts move. If the bolts move, that would be cracked, and then you know, hey, I got something up with my scooter. I need to check the bolts. My camera's all over the place. Anyways, that's how you change the tire. We got a new tire on there. This is the tire we had on there, and this is the tire we have on there now um now to adjust your suspension this is super easy it's going to take you two seconds to understand your spanner wrench or whatever the hell this thing's called 55 62 is what it says on there put her on there lefty loosey righty tidy so that means the tighter you get this down the more preload it's going to have so the less trampoline it's going to feel the less preload you have on here so the looser it is uh, the more trampolini it's going to feel. Now you can see, let me zoom in there. I got mine down quite a bit, and that's because I weigh 260 pounds. So very trampolini on me until I took my spanner wrench again, put her on there, went lefty loosey righty tighty, and tightened her down. But yeah, guys, that is the absolute basics of changing a tire or changing a tube on the Nanrobot D6 2.0. And uh, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something from this. I know the, you know, my video quality's not the best. It's not like this is amazing, crazy stuff, but I hope it was informative and I hope this helped you out. Um, if there's anything else you would like to see in the future with the D6 other than just some ride videos, let me know and I'd be happy to accommodate. Anyways, I'm Soap. This is Careless Kingdom. As always, thanks for watching. Peace. Oh.